me and my wife uh, we both have decided to have a baby so to plan for baby we went to that hospital for counseling like you know the guy or the doctor like we are planning to have a baby and uh, just uh, uh, please suggest uh, what are the things like you know we should be considered and, and things we should be careful about and what to eat and what not to eat and that doctor has given us a very good counseling at the earlier phase and during the whole process like you know uh, my wife got convinced conceive in like one to two months after consulting with the doctors and there was no problem during whole process and there was a regular monthly follow-up and uh, all the usg all the anomaly scan all the you know whatever they have asked us to do the all the reports so showing was good the thing uh the one complicated thing in my wife case is like uh in nepal most of the females they are having a high thyroid so and she she had also had a high thyroid and and just like when my baby was around uh, 32, 33 weeks and she had a like high liver function test also. And and then uh, then doctor consulted us like uh, when you have a high LFT, then it will it will be very difficult to have a normal delivery. So we might have to plan for the CS and uh, and uh, like uh, during the whole 32 weeks of stays there was no complication there was my wife doesn't have to suffer a lot nothing has happened everything was going smoothly and then even like and her consolation like we took it as a positive mood and we followed what whatever they have uh, suggested us and <clears throat> and like on 36 weeks like uh, around 35 weeks what happened is like you know my wife again had a high itching and she was like you know very worried like other again she might be having a higher lft or not and then next day we went to our doctor and uh, she she did the usg and she also did the um the movement of baby inside the inside her stomach and then uh, everything looks normal and what our doctor had consulted that time is like you know it's now like his age was showing through the usg was around 3 kg and she was telling us like you know during the usg there might be chances of having 5 to 10 percent of uh, margin of error so his weight must be 2.5 kg so and and she was telling us now it's good to have a you know the cs you can you can come anytime from today onwards then you can have a cs uh the, you don't have to worry about anything just just have a just have a cs and in my family we didn't have ours my family was very small me my wife and my but my dad is very old is like he was around 84 years old and we didn't have a joint family so we decided okay now doctor is asking us to have a cs and it's good to go anytime after this day and then we decided okay let's plan for the tomorrow or day after tomorrow and next day we planned for cs and we had a she had a cs delivery and and he his weight during the birth was around 2.85 kg and uh, even there was a one score I, I forgot that terminology there was a score like his score was 9 out of 10 when the baby was born like I I, I just forget that terminology that score there was one score something like that and after 30 minutes he started having fast breathing and his his face becoming blue and the, the team suggested me like you know uh, he's having a fast breathing we should he should be admitted to NICU and we should be giving a oxygen he should be put under oxygen in the box and we said okay and then after like putting in the oxygen box even his breathing was not on control and they were telling me is like okay his his breathing is out of control we he need to be under that uh ventilator like uh, he should be supported with the ventilator support and that's okay it's fine if if, if the medical the things are suggesting us to have a ventilator then please uh, have it him in a high ventilator and what is happening like after four to five days he's out of ventilator and uh, he he he's now breathing on his own now and and after four, when he was out of the ventilator the then the blood report came is like you know he had some infection from the ventilator he had a hospital infection and uh, so he should be like around 14 days of cycle of antibiotic and after that he he he, he will be discharged so uh, so till 14 days there won't be any problem like he had his vitals and everything was very good. He was on the NHU department and after 20 days, he got discharged. So after discharge, like his weight, he was three, three kg plus, I think, and everything was good. So we took him home 
and after three days again he had a high fever and just before the fever he had a 120 ml of uh, milk and he had a fever and i and we me and my wife both were so worried and we took him to the hospital within an hour like in the evening so and we we asked to the doctor he had a very high fever and even we even uh, before taking to her, him hospital we uh, consulted with the doctor through the phone call and we gave him a cetamol and even that cetam his his fever was not getting down so we were both worried and we took him to the same hospital and uh, the doctor and the doctor was telling us like you know he need to be okay so you guys are very worried so we'll observe him for 24 hours do the notice so you you admit him and we'll 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 look after him so and uh, even the, during the admission they did a quick uh quick some test kind of sodium potassium i forget that name and they said it's normal so they let us observe him for 24 hours okay it's fine so next day in the daytime like uh, they they call they call they call us and they were saying like you know he might be having a meningitis kind of symptom. He we found him. He he's having some seizure kind of activities under the NHU observation. So we might have to do the lumbar function test. So they have to take the fluid from his backbone. And we said, okay, the, if this is the protocol, please take the uh, lumbar function test. And what is happening that time was you know when they took the water from the lumbar function test at that time he he there was a pause like you know there there was not clean water there was a clear clear pause and which uh, the doctor ha has not wait for the call search report like you know either there is the meningitis or not and uh, it's it is clearly showing is the severe meningitis so they started giving the meningitis antibiotic and they were telling me it's like you know uh now he he looks like he's suffering from meningitis now again we have to uh, have him for 21 days of meningitis antibiotic cycle and after that he 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 will recover and he'll get discharged so uh so on his 25th of day like uh, he was discharged on 20 20 20 21st day after three days he again readmitted so on 24 to 25th day he he his meningitis antibiotic started so technically on on the 46th day he he'll he will be discharged right so Every day on the next day on the morning, there they, they, is a counseling on the NICU and every day morning counseling was like, you know, his vital is work, his vital is good, he's feeding, everything is good. So he's under control. So from 25 to 40 days of day, every morning, they they were giving us, us the same counseling. There wasn't any fluctuate of any vital, nothing. There was nothing to worry about uh, during the 40 days. So in the evening, my wife, me and wife again, uh, visited the hospital and in the evening like you know the, all the senior doctors they they go to house and the junior doctors um, work in the in the night time so and uh, in the evening like my wife went to see the baby and she she bring one report like you know uh, the report was saying like you know <laughs> while doing the ultrasound of his uh, hair they were uh, showing the huge amount of pause so they might have to do MRI for confirmation. And we both were so worried, like, you know, um, MRI next day. And I was wondering how come, like, you know, the all of a sudden the pause came in his head and in his head and all of, how, how, why we, we should be doing MRI. So we don't have any option. And, okay, we decided to do list to MRI. And MRI report clearly says that, you know, there was a, um, too many of pause in his head and they have to do... <laughs> uh his neurosurgery to uh, drain out do, those pores and and uh, then the he's he's under the neuro neuro team that now the neuro team is looking after him and they were uh so the mri suggested there's a there's a pause and we have to do his hair surgery for the first time and the the, uh, the objective of that hair surgery is to drain out all the pores so first surgery happened and uh, and after surgery he he looks active and after seven days, again the uh, ultrasound is saying showing that there is still the pause is there. The the amount of pause which is shown in the MRI is not drained uh, in a collector. So they again uh, suggested us to have another operation to drain out the pause from his brain. So I said, okay, we didn't, I didn't have any option. So if medically is saying the saying to have a uh, hair surgery, let's do hair surgery. So on uh, he he had a second surgery. Uh, after seven days and again after two weeks uh, again the same uh, 
team were swaying, swaying, saying like still there is a pause and we have to again uh, do the another surgery. There is no any option, and even I didn't have any option to you know uh, to say yes or no. And if this operation will going to save him, then please do. Then he had a third surgery, and after at the age of his 80th day of birth. And uh, what they were saying, like, you know, now all the pause is drained out. Now he, they, he, there has to be the permanent solution is to put the sand in his head. And so that the all drained water will go through the sand. And, and so that after that, he can, he will be discharged from the hospital. And on the, on the day of 18th, like he had a sand operation. And uh, after staying 10 days, around after on 90 days, he got discharged having four surgery in his head. So I, I truly at that time I was really convinced, like you know, he had a he he will going to have a very tough life because he had already four head surgery. He will not going to have a normal baby like other babies. I was completely convinced, like you know, and even I was convinced, like is like you know, he had a sound sound in his head, and that uh technique in in that is not a permanent solution. So there might be have a, there might be chances of having sound revision in the future. I was just praying, like you know that sound revision should happen only after five years at that time his brain will going to grow again grow and so that he can learn so that he even he will understand what is sound and yeah, sound as such thing and the same team and then now he was discharged after three months and the same team what they have suggested us is like you know now we have to measure his head on a weekly basis and also we have to do his ultrasound on a month basis and uh, on the same ultrasound report and the head measurement will, will be consulted with the neuro doctor so that that neuro doctor told us like i should be follow up him for at least for two years on every month regarding his uh all the bite all the milestone deployment and his activities as well so on a good faith like you know we we me and my wife we both knew that like he will going to have a very uh, challenge life ahead and he his life is not going to normal like other babies so we we both were convinced okay let's give him a life let's try our best to you know uh whatever we can so and every month so we 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 go to same hospital we do usc from the same radiologist and we we uh, take a print out that report to same new the, the new doctor from the same hospital and based on the usc and the head measurement and the his activity new doctor is giving us counseling so after four months after five months after six months there was uh, his uh, or his hair size and the the USC report everything was looking normal on seventh of on his seventh month the the USC guy told us like you know <clears throat> there is some sound is not working properly and there is some water pressure on his head so you have you must be like uh, if the they, if there is a water pressure and if the sound is not working then he 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 must go through the sound division operation that that what uh, you you uh, really told us and we again took the report to neuro and he was saying is the we didn't have to worry about this he told us one medical term it was just an x pack you uh it's very common for in these cases so you don't have to worry and uh uh, you can go home and, and now on eighth month the same radius told us like you know now he's uh, in the left side of his brain there was 8.8 .8 centimeter of a water pressure and uh, so it looks like sound is not working so the, you must do sound revision operation that what the uh, our radiologist told us and we again and so us so us the same doctor like you know 8.8 .8 centimeter like this size and i told doctor doctor so this is a quite big so this really suggesting us it's 8.8 .8 centimeter i'm really worried and that what doctor told us is like you know this should not be 8.8 .8 centimeter this should be 8.8 .8 mm so 8.8 .8 .8 mm becomes like this this size and i was i was okay the eight, if it is mm then i didn't have to worry it's fine and he told us okay you can come next month on the next month, the same railway is shown us like now he's uh, the, the, the pressure size is now 9.8 centimeter on the left side and 2.8 at the right side. And uh, I told the uh, radiologist this is like last month the neuro doctor was uh, suggesting this shouldn't be CM, it should be MM. And the, that the radiologist told us like, you know, uh, this is this cannot be MM, this is CM, it's clear shown in the uh, ultrasound report. 
and we both were worried and the, then the neuro doctor came and we told him like you know even the last time it was cm now again the this size is growing to 9.8 cm i'm really worried and here and at that time that neuro doctor was also you know he was shocked to you know have a confirm of cm his observation was mm but the, it came to cm and he told us on a very dark face like saying okay let's do the mri and just let's confirm from the mri so next day he had an mri and uh, and the mri reports suggest that there is a huge amount of pressure in his head and the, the uh, that ultrasound radiologist reports was came true and uh, and then now we have we have only one option to do sound revision operation okay and we said okay let's do the sound revision operation and this, then the sound revision operation happened and after operation he he was under observation on the nhu the, the, the pihu department and the next day when he came back to our cabin and the nurse came and he she started giving him a sitamol dose right and my wife asked uh, how much ml you are trying to give him the sitamol dose and she was saying it is around 66 ml like and we my wife was shocked like usually when he had a fever we give him a two to three ml the 66 ml is a quite big i think i think this shouldn't be uh, given to him please confirm and the nurse told us it's written in the cardiac the doctor has also suggested a 66 ml cetamol to him and we my wife argued and she confirmed and later the nurse came oh it's just a three ml uh it was mistaken and at that time uh, my baby already had a two dose of 66 ml cetamol earlier after the OT, right? And then after the cetamol dose, my faith with the whole hospital, my faith with the whole team has like you know completely broken. I I trusted him so I trusted him a lot, and the, the whole team whole I have a good faith on them during the whole process, and I was very you know my baby had already four head surgery and that's his fifth operation and they should be very careful about it and i was completely shocked you know to see the thing happening in front of my eyes and what is happening the next day the, the, the whole team also realized like realized like they had a mistake and they also now they started giving him a, a distilled water to you know to control to remove the, the cetamol overdose thing as such and whole even though the management even though the medical director came to us they came sorry uh we'll, we had a mistake and we'll try to you know do something for him we, we try our best from a hospital and you don't have to worry and we told them like look his his life is still uh, challenging he's like not not a normal baby and we are we both are convinced like he'll be having a very difficult life but please try to give him a good care and we, we are very you know worried to take him uh home as soon as possible please give a base to recover this thing and we 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 didn't do anything in the hospital during that time <coughs> and what happened is like you know after four to five days like he had a fever and he already have a already had a high dose of cetamol and they told us like you know they wouldn't have any medicine as such so we just uh, we just uh, give him the cold water and the uh, i forgot this terminology the cold water during the fever like with the cloth and the cotton 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 cloth and the cold water in in his forehead we didn't have uh, any medicine so tried to give this thing so and and we both were so tired and we requested the hospital look we both are very tired please uh, take care of him from your side and we'll take a rest once his fever is down we'll 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 take him home and please, during that period please uh take care of him from your end we requested the whole management and they said okay we will take care of him and we'll we'll try to recover his fever as soon as possible so around i think I, around after 14 days his fever was on control and uh, management team okay now his vitals are fine his fever is controlled now you can uh, discharge him so i and then uh, what i did was like you know i want to have a meeting with the whole team regarding the thing like how the neuro doctor had mistakenly did 8.8 .8 cm and mm things how the this cetamol things happen in front of life and i what i asked them is like you know look my uh, my baby will be having very tougher life ahead and he had already a five hair surgery i you guys know he's all you know 
like what is happening to him and what what action should be taken to him if i argue if i you know argue with you guys with the, if i argue with the management then i don't have any option to take him to another hospital because you guys knows him from the day one so i request you guys to accept like you know you guys had some mistake during his caring and and please um, suggest me a way forward like how we can go ahead and what uh, what um, treatment you will you will going to offer him in the future if if he had some problem with his health and that time what management told us like you know you are not a doctor and uh, uh, you can't point us any mistakes there is no mistakes from our side and uh, they were saying we can't take any action to the duro doctor we can't take any action to those sitamol overdose team and you know and the the whole management is like they took the 180 u turn and they were saying we, we haven't made any mistake as such if you if you see any mistake then uh, go to court go to nepal medical council and show us like we did a mistake and <laughs> I was completely helpless at that time, and okay, um, like okay, then I take my baby. He was discharged from the hospital, and then I started reading the all the, his medical report during his like you know birth. Uh, very to be very honest with you, I had no idea about those medical terminologies. I had only like you know the only medical term I know is the paracetamol and the, you know diarrhea. I didn't have any idea about this neuro thing, this this son thing. And then after discharge from his, I started reading all the medical journal. I started consulting all the doctors and. What I came to conclusion is like, you know, look, this is not just a minor error. This is a gross negligence error. And I have to submit a case file. And I, I write the case file myself and submit it to the Nepal Medical Council. And they did an investigation. So I'll share you that English, uh, the investigative report with you guys as well. So what and from their finding, what they have given is like, you know, the Sitamol overdose is a mistake. And then the, the neuro doctor had also done a mistake. And there was a, like, you know, like I said, on 25th day when he, he when I took him to the hospital and they, they did a lumbar puncture, there was a pause. And uh, even the, on 25th day, their radiologist was, you know, did a USG and he suggested like, you know, there was a debris in his head and we must hear the hospital, the doctor must do MRI to confirm. On 25th day that the, the radiologist also suggested that he should go do MRI, but they, they didn't tell us about those things and they they told us on 40 date, like, you know, he had to go to MRI. So these three findings were found from the NMC in their in initial investigation. And they gave me this report. And from the NMC, like they, they, they have pointed the hospital management. There was a miscommunication. Even the minor, minor, minor mistakes has been shown in the report. And after that, uh, the hospital didn't do anything. And even they were not in a state to accept any mistake. And then uh, the the NMC told me like I have to go to court to you know to to give uh, to fight against the hospital to punish the doctor and uh, what NMC did is like you know the, they had just uh, uh, well, one doctor the, the, the those doctor who put uh, who gave uh, sixty six ml he that doctor was out of duty for seven days and all the other team they they just gave a warning only they haven't took any action they haven't suspended uh, not of not for one day the, the one doctor was suspend, suspended for seven days and uh, that's it and then i and after like uh and then i, I went to court uh, high court uh we have a uh, like high court and the high court had predicted or uh, almost after two years like you know okay <coughs> Uh, Sudha Hala made a mistake and you have to give him compensation as such. So that was the like uh, the, the the that report came like, like last month. So I'm still waiting for the full court report. So the, which was from the high court. So that's it. So the condition of my baby's name is Rehan. So condition of Rehan is like, you know, he has no brain. He has no sin. He's fully bedridden and we have to feed him. He can't do anything. He don't cry anything as such. He always stay in the bed. We feed him, and he had a, his vitals are always good. And he suffer mostly from the fever and a cough. That's it. So, so he's just breathing like uh, at the moment. And if like uh, as per my uh, my observation is like you know when he when he had to go through the ventilator on the day one, and he had an infection. At that time, 
he already had a meningitis and the whole doctor team was just looking after the the blood blood infection only at that time i'm sure he had already had a head meningitis and they missed that but and after my baby incident they they had change the nhu protocol like if the infant is having a uh, fever from the ventilator they, they must go through the blood report as well as the lumbar function test so from the nmc side they they told us like you know on 25th of day the usc doctor told us to have an mri but they didn't told us about the, anything about mri and they didn't uh, you know they haven't right. on 25th day finding was very crucial if if we managed to had a spos drain out on 25th day there they, they, they might be good chance like you know he'll have a uh, very good uh, condition at the moment but unfortunately he had a surgery on the 14th day so that that's too late i think he is my first baby and like uh, I think um, seeing your baby in front of you will have a very different experience. Uh, even like that, that, that happiness you feel when you see your baby, you can't explain. Like that was my first experience and I was really happy while seeing him in the uh, NHU. And like you said, regarding hospital, it was one of the very renowned hospital. It's an international hospital and all the doctors, they are, are very professional. So I have to, you know, when, you, when I'm going to the international hospital, my understanding is like, you know, they, they all are very good. They follow the good protocol and I have to trust them, you know. The only thing that, you know, that hit me very hard is like, you know, if I just cross-check the, cross the report with another doctors, then I, I don't think he, he will have to go through this suffering at a lot. So I, the only mistake I did was like, you know, I just follow their counseling. I just, uh, you know, accepted whatever they have uh, told to me. So uh, regarding denial, like, you know, look, uh, they are also the human. I am also human. I also make a mistake. There is there is nothing as such like, you know, you are a doctor and you will not mistake. Everyone is going to make a mistake. The thing here is like, you know, it was just not a mistake. It was like, you know, you know what is happening to him and you are not sharing the whole process to me. And that's why he has suffered. He has to suffer from a day one to uh, the now he's four years, the till till his age. So it's a, I'm, I'm quite, I'm, I'm still shocked why they, they are not accepting the facts and I'm still wondering how they will sleep on this gate, like, you know, what they had did to him during the, his treatment. So to the new parents, like, uh, like when till his age of two years, I couldn't sleep properly. Uh, I have to uh, left my job. I have to give up my project. And financially in Nepal, we didn't have insurance as such. It will go through your whole hard and money. Financially, I was almost zero. Mentally, I was almost zero. And uh, to the newer parents, what uh, what I suggest you is like you know, just have a concern and just cross check the finding told you told to you by doctor with other as well. In my case, I just you know I take it very normal. I I I, I take it as a very on a good fit from those experts but uh, sometimes you have to cross check with other as well so i suggest this uh, cross check your finding with other doctor that's it what i think is like you know like he like in his first mri report he his the the, the report shows us like you know there was a 80 percent of brain damage in his mri report and after consulting with the other doctor after this incident, they were telling me, is like, you know, there is no point of doing surgery as so many times. There is no point of, you know, trying to save his life. Like, yeah, everyone is saying, like, you know, uh, I forgot that terminology, like, you know, there is like, uh, there's one terminology in medical, like, uh, whatever you do, you do treatment, there won't be any improvement. So in that case, you have to, you know, um, accept the facts and put it as natural so but in terms of in private hospital uh, when they do surgery when they uh, give me taste report they are earning very good money but this thing will not happen in a government hospital but the in nepal the government hospital services in terms of treatment it's amazing but in terms of getting the queue like you know 
everyone will go to government hospital and it's very difficult to have a you know allocate uh, alloc- you to, to get the surgery on time to get the queue so those who have a very good link to network they will get it on time but that's why the um, in nepal all the private hospital they are giving good services and my only concern is like you know i'm paying a good amount but still they are not giving me the right treatment they are still not giving me a right counseling so that's the only dis- disappointing thing from my side to hospital at the moment i, I don't have any like you know like uh, revenge kind of thing with uh, those uh, doctors and uh, even the hospital uh, the whatever had happened there was a very bad thing and it was a very unfortunate thing happen with me the only concern is like you know if they accepted the their mistakes and if they you know uh, if they are ready to you know take care of him in the future like i, I wouldn't be sad but the, then i i can't do anything and from the family side you know while well, well, like no one will try to you know everyone will try to save your family member from the uh, any diseases and uh, but in in my in his treatment uh, he has already gone through five head surgery in the age of 9 months and in my family member my senior family member they were like you know very worried like you know i have lost i have put so much of money in his treatment and they they were very you know hesitant like you know uh, he he wouldn't be like a normal baby and why i am trying so much to save him through those treatment in nepal like what will happen uh the the family they calculate the money and the, if they don't have the money they stop doing treatment to their babies in my case he already ha- he has no brain i know that but uh, i have to save in, in any case but my family my close they, they haven't uh, told me in front of my face but that's their you know saying in, in the back of when, when i was not there they were saying i tried too much to you know save him <laughs> and the, that's the feedback from the family and luckily in terms of my me my wife we both have a same understanding he 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 has already had a birth here now we have to give our best to give him you know whatever we have so there is no any if else we have to give our best to you know support his life so the, this is between me and my wife but the, my family has different version and even the i didn't have any hard any enemy any revenge with my those doctors and anything i have a very good fight with them so so i didn't have any bad thing with the doctors and hospital as of now the only thing like uh, in my case there was no transparency and even the, the accountability was not there so uh, whatever is the report if they tell told me on a very on if they told me on in in front of me and they have shown if they have explained me you know pros and cons of what is his condition if they clearly mention everything about his future and everything then the situation would be different and in terms of accountability like look when he had a overdose of sitamol whole management came and they say sorry and they were saying like you know we'll do anything to save save him and after when his uh, when he was discharged uh, and then they they were saying we didn't ha- we, d- we haven't made any mistakes uh, we, we 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 can't do anything we can't take any action with the, those doctors and the nurses and they were telling me you can you can go to the court and nmc so in terms of accountability i haven't seen any accountability from them <laughs> and also transparency if if they have said what uh, the his real condition to me then uh, there would there would be a different condition story if if they have you know clearly said me the real report and as such I'm going to put some improvement because uh, i think this is the i think uh, uh, this is the second case where like you know someone from patient side who put a file against the private hospital regarding medical negligence and patient side at the own this won't happen in nepal so when in the from the legal side if someone own the case and it, it could it will be easier for other other parties in the future you know they 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 can they can take the take the example of my case and even there was a terminology in legal like you know this is the example said has been through from the those judges and and everything so next time 
some if someone has an issue with the hospital they can give my reference to the judges and the court and they can uh, there's a high chance that the same patient party will get a good favor because uh, the, the favor has been already given to me so based on those legal clause they might have a chance to you know get party from the uh, court uh, in their favor this thing i i always told to my wife like you know those doctors they are they are working on in one organization my my god's feeling is saying is like you know they are they are not allowed to speak personally in position they are not allowed to speak outside the hospital because that's their okay this, this that hospital is the way they are working so if they start speaking against the hospital then they will gonna lose the job and uh, from my deep inside i still feel like you know they have some kind of you know sympathy and uh, i still believe in a coming days they will con- they will confess what had happened and you know and they will accept like you know they had made a blunder mistake so i'm just assuming so hope this this will come true but uh, they all knew it's a gross negligence but the because of the hospital and organization they are not allowed to speak i think people go to hospital for the treatment they have a very good faith like look this my case has been viral all over nepal like if someone had a neuro thing they they, they must have read my my story so in the hospital i am still wondering why they are accepting even the after nmc decision they should accept like you know we had made a mistakes and we'll try to you know improvise our system we'll try to improvise our protocol but as of date they haven't done anything so this is very uh, from my personal observation this is not a right approach you know if you are you are you have a very good hospital you are giving so many jobs, you are giving so many jobs to so many staff like you are already creating good uh, job opportunity for so many staff so organization like hospital who whose main main motive is to save life to give a good care and they are still not speaking they are still not accepting is like very wrong thing they are doing as of now it will be very good for them if they accept it and they have you know uh, and try to come in front of me and you know take care of the thing but i i don't think that will going to happen uh, the uh, regarding in nepal though like look the nepali's health system is very very poor like uh, and like uh, locally we we live in city we have uh, access to a good hospital but the people living in the villages they don't have any access to the good health care and uh, those they don't understand those protocol so uh, if i have to talk of the cities if i have to talk of the hospital then what i believe is like you know there has to be very good uh, documented uh, counseling documented you know what to do what not to do you know the hospital side they always try to focus on uh, taking the consent sign only but they are not you know they are not taking initiative on giving a um, uh, recorded counseling you know documented counseling what they have counseled to the patient party in my case if you if if i have to if the doctor have to speak they they will they will, they will have another story you know i know i have told sanjeev this 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 and he is exaggerating the whole thing this might be the version of their doctor even the, in the, when uh, they 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 the dispute between patient side and the hospital the hospital side answers always uh, the same like you know no we we have explained him uh, properly but he is not listening if this thing just came in a documented form then the 50 to 60% problem won't happen uh, onwards uh, this is what uh, uh, this is achievable and this is possible at, at first there has to be a very written uh counseling from the doctor hospital side then it this is going to improve a lot uh after this incident like you know i started talking about the neuro neurologist issue the hydrocephalus thing i have started advocating through social media through news through article so uh when my baby story came in the news uh, i hardly uh, like i i got around 100 plus messages from the mothers and going to be, be parents very soon and they have so many questions like you know okay i'm i am i have also have a uh, high thyroid i have also with high lft my son also had a one surgery they have so many questions and i'm i'm wondering like you know there has to be very good you know information like you know you, you, there is there is no any good information in the internet as well so 
in my case i gone through all the journals and all the medical thing but you, if you, if you are a passenger and you want to have a second opinion expert second opinion there is there is there is no any expert second opinion here in nepal in nepal like <laughs> you go to one doctor and if you go to another doctor that doctor will what he he will do is like you know he'll he'll give a wrong he'll again say the bad about the another doctor and he try to uh, bring that patient to his hospital so this is this is very common here in nepal so if they, if there is a very good or i don't know the free second opinion thing free doctors you know who who advocate who counsel uh, who address the questions of the parents then then that will going to help a lot but the, if you have to if you again go go with other private hospital doctors then uh, you you will not get a good counseling i think so, look the damage has already been happened so uh, there is like only miracle like you know only miracle can uh, change the thing and the the why i am fighting as of date is like you know no other parent has to go through what i am going through at the moment because uh, but honestly he was born in 2018 during his uh, that time I, me and my wife kore was on top we both were doing so good in terms of our job in terms of our professional and in 2 years my wife left the job i have also left the job and we both started caring him for two years we expense we expense so much of money and then covid happened and what i decided is like you know okay now covid happened i have to stay in the home with him so i sold my car i i sold my car and told my wife look this covid is not going to stop in one to two months this will going to happen at least for two to three years here in nepal so we we we'll just take risk we we try we'll try to you know mentally strong and have a good quality of life and then from covid 2020 luckily i got good job from working from home i started working like you know morning to uh, midnight till 11 to 12 every day like i work 14 hours per day from 2022 and luckily like everything is happening good and uh, we we also had a second baby during the lockdown so, the the rehan we have already accepted what has happened to him and we 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 both are feeling proud you know our life is now back to normal and we try to give him whatever we have as of now